legalization, the industry has trained consumers to believe that high potency equals high quality. But that's not necessarily the case. There are other factors that lead to cannabis quality. And that starts off with having good genetics. When you have good genetics to start with, and it was grown properly, you obtain typicity. Depending on the genetic lineage of the cannabis plant, it will express in different ways. For example, a haze that will grow tall won't necessarily have the highest potency, but it will produce high terpenes and an aroma that is sweet and citrus, and that makes good quality cannabis. Another example would be a kush. What if you saw a kush that had low potency and it tasted like dry grass? That's not typical of a kush. We're looking for high potency, dense bud, and a really skunky, piney, gassy type of aroma. That is an example of what typicity is. As you journey through your cannabis experience, you will learn what each cultivar really should express like. And that takes experience. If you don't have experience in determining if a bud is typical of the cultivar or not, no sweat. You can still grade its quality by just using your own senses. So a combination of a lot of trichomes, the right moisture, a clean trim, and an intact bud is going to lead to a really nice user experience so that when I brush and grind the joint, it comes out nice and fluffy. So when I go in to roll it, the joint almost sticks to itself. To help calibrate us in using the quality grading tool, I'm gonna to show some examples of low grade to high grade cannabis. Bud integrity. How did the cannabis flower develop? We're looking for bud that is dense and full and almost symmetrical in shape across the entire batch. Now, of course, this is a nice example of a kush. Sometimes with hazes, you're gonna see some sponginess and some holes in it, but rather, we also don't wanna see broken bits of the bud that are left out. And a bad example is something where the bud is trying to create a shape, but really there's gaps in the way that the bud has really expressed itself. Odor strength. We want something that smells really strong. It's not necessarily if you like the smell, but how loud the smell is. So let's give it a try. It smells like nothing except for hay and a little dull. Doesn't score well. Hints of actual, uh, I would say this one is like a, a piney, it's still grassy type of aroma. Ooh, nice and strong. That is coming out really well. Oh, boom. This is what I'm talking about, that the smell is so loud that as soon as you open the lid, the whole room smells like weed. Pleasantness of aroma. This is a subjective and qualitative assessment However, it's still very important. You still have to like the way it smells. So if you come across something that is cheesy and funky and really creamy, that just sounds perfect to me, but maybe not to you. Trichum expression. That's another way of saying how caked is the bud in its crystals. When considering trichome expression, you're looking for the density in trichomes and also the health of the trichomes. Excellent trichome expression is when you see a dense winter wonderland forest of trichomes, of these mushroom heads that are tall and big, and their trichome heads are, look like their bubbles are about to burst. I love it when you can see the milkiness. They're, it's opaque. Poor trichome expression is when you see sparse trichomes that are small, short, and very clear. They're translucent. Trichomes that are a little dark on the red side are acceptable, but I'd rather see more milky white trichomes than amber trichomes. Trim. It's very easy to determine what is a good trim. We're looking for clean bud with no sugar leaves, and all you're seeing is the flower. The key concept to having good moisture is that you want the ideal water content of something between 10.5 and 11% so that the flower actually maintains the monoterpene content. And those monoterpenes is what makes cannabis so delicious and so smooth to smoke. So when something is dry and crumbly like this, and it turns, oh, it turns to dust, that is something that is like less than 20. If I find anything that doesn't belong on my bud, like hair, bugs, 
seeds, or mold, I'm going to deduct points based on its severity. So anything more than two bugs would fail, and mold definitely would go in the garbage. If I see a seed here and there, it's not really a big deal because I might just keep that for later. I almost forgot. Dry pull flavor. While it's tempting to spark up the joint after you roll it, it's important to note the dry pull flavor before it's lit. We're looking for the flavor that lands on your tongue to match the aroma that you smell with your nose. Bad dry pull flavor is when there's a total mismatch to the aroma of the bud when you squeeze. You get something real nice. And you can taste it on your tongue, you can smell it on your nose, that palate just gets excited. That's when you have a good idea of it being a really nice health bar. And that's a maybe. The best way to tell is doing a proper burn test. The most important factor in determining cannabis quality is flavor when you burn the joint. Does the flavor represent the aromas that you had when you were smelling it? Does it actually bring forth additional flavors and other flavors into what you're smoking? How does the taste land on your tongue and through your nose? Does the taste of the inhale match the exhale? Also, think about the intensity of flavor. Strong flavored cannabis is good quality cannabis. Bad quality cannabis is when the flavor does not match the way it smells at all or not as what expected. Worse than having no flavor is having bad flavor. And if it tastes bad, like bitter, salt, like chili spice, like a, not the good kind of fragrance spice, that kind of flavor is definitely undesirable. I'm always looking at the smoothness. How smooth is the smoke as I inhale through my mouth, throat, into my lungs, and through my nose? I don't want to be coughing or sneezing. I want to have that feeling where it's almost like an oil coating my mouth and my throat so that it feels like it's a smooth, creamy smoke. When it's dry and harsh, and it feels like nails scratching the back of your throat, <coughs> and there's a bitter taste on the back of your tongue, that's bad. A really difficult parameter to score high on is endurance of flavor. So that is, how long does the flavor last as you smoke the joint? I love it when I smoke the joint to the end, and it still tastes good. And it's amazing if the joint tastes even better as you smoke more of it. Bad cannabis is when the flavor starts to get worse and worse as you smoke the joint to the point where for me, I'm a little too picky for that. I'd rather put the joint out than to finish it. That's the last parameter, ash color. As I'm burning the joint, I want to be able to see an ash accumulate that is soft in texture and also white in color. Now, salt and pepper ash isn't too bad but I don't want to see black ash, especially if it's chunky. And chunky, what I mean is when I ash it out and I actually touch it, it's, it rolls off and you can feel texture of it. That is not an indication of a good burn at all. And it's very rare that we come across flower and score over 90. So anything really that scores over 80 is good enough in my book. Are you curious to know what grade your cannabis flower is? Use the cannabis quality grading tool to find your score. Thank you.